So I want to make a little bit of a different kind of video today. I don't often talk about comic books, although there is a couple videos on my channel talking about my Disney collection and that sort of thing. But today, I want to do a pickups video of a different kind. No video games here, so if that's what you signed on for, find another video, because this one is about comics. <laughs> So some of you may know that I am a big fan of classic Disney comics, your Donald Ducks and Uncle Scrooges, your Mickey Mouse adventures, DuckTales, things of that nature. And I've got a couple cool things to show you here. I did a video a while back showing off my Fantagraphics hardcover collection of Disney comics. And uh, I've got a couple more here to show you. Uh, this one I'm actually reading right now. This is Uncle Scrooge and Donald Duck Bear Mountain Tales, and this is a collection of all of the stories, uh, or most of them anyway, from Carl Barks and Don Rosa and others that uh, referenced the Bear Mountain location in the Uncle Scrooge stories. This is a really beautiful hardbound book by Fantagraphics. Um, the artwork varies inside because it's from different time periods and different uh, artists and that sort of thing. Um, absolutely, really love this book. It's one of the uh, one of the nicest books in the line of the Fantagraphics books. And then uh, switching over to Mickey Mouse, this one is a little bit different here. This is Mickey Mouse Zombie Coffee, and it comes in this nice slip cover here. Uh, I really liked the art in here. The idea with this is that it's, uh, I believe, new comics that are made to look old, um, but it's really, uh, really cool. The art style and stuff in here, I really dig. Um, this was recommended to me by somebody on Facebook that I follow, uh, Debbie Perry and uh, I picked it up. I have not read this yet, but uh, it's definitely on my list. Let's get into some of the stuff that I have been reading. <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, I was a big comic collector for a long time. I ran a comic book auction site on Facebook, and uh, you know, there was a lot of there was a lot of investment that went into my old comic book collection and I actually sold my entire comic book collection a couple of years ago because I was I was collecting like an investor would collect. I was speculating on books, I was buying stuff in mint condition, bagging and boarding, and I don't want to do that anymore. I sold that collection, but I got the bug to start buying comics again, and I'm buying comics this time I, you know, at the rate of one or two books at a time that I'm actually going to read like that day or that week. So I actually have a lot more to say about these books than I used to have with my old collection because for the most part, I have read these or if I haven't read them yet, I'm going to read them very soon because I'm actually interested on what's inside the comic books. Gosh darn it. Uh, so this is a new series here. This is issue number one and issue number two, uh, Beware the Planet of the Apes. And this is a prequel series to the very first 1968, don't quote me if I'm wrong there, uh, the 60s uh, original Planet of the Apes movie. Uh, this comic series takes place just a little bit before, like months before um, that movie. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know whether this would be considered canon to the series because it's a comic, you know, by Marvel, basically. But uh, it's pretty interesting nonetheless. I've read the first two issues. The art is really nice. It's very uh, representative of the original movies. I'll show you here if I can get the light off. Um, I like the way the artwork looks. I like the way the story is developing. They're kind of going in a direction of exploring the human settlement that the apes apparently didn't know about at that time. But uh, these are coming out monthly. I've got the first two issues. And uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Okay, something I was really interested in that came out, started coming out late last year or early this year, I guess. And that is Harley Quinn, Black, White, and Redder. 
Now this is a six part mini series. It's an anthology series with different artists and different short stories. But the whole gimmick here is that the books are black and white with touches of red. I'll show you a couple more pages here. But really captivating art style. I really like it. And I have here the entire uh, six issue run. Uh, they're out of order here, but this is three and four and five. Let's look a little bit inside this one. Look at some of the art. Pretty dramatic stuff. I really like this art style and the format of this being an anthology of short stories. I particularly like this cover. That's gorgeous artwork. Um, but uh, these are a lot of fun to read. I've read two of the six so far and they're, uh, they're a lot of fun because they're just sort of short, funny stories. Uh, you know, different than the usually dark and uh, you know, overbearing DC stories. These are mostly funny stories. This is another nice cover I like. Um, but you get the point here. And then there's another series that I just picked up that just came out last week. And it's kind of along the same lines. This is done by Marvel, not DC. Uh, but it's a series that they call Black, White, and Blood. And this is issue one of Alien, uh, Black, White, and Blood. And I did read this yesterday when I bought it. And uh, certainly the tone is a little bit more serious. The artwork is a little more in-depth in these books. Uh, but uh, it's very interesting the way they do the art it's semi-realistic there are three different artists and three different stories in this book and from what i understand they're going to carry this through a four issue set uh where all three of these artists get to complete their story over the the four issues and tie it together or something but uh this is really cool as well i like comics where they do something unique uh you know with the art or something unique with the story where it's tied together in a small package i don't like to get into um you know the middle of a long running series for example and try and figure out what i've missed i really like these you know compact short stories six issues 10 12 issues maximum uh something else i have been picking up uh, the Godzilla series by IDW has been running for a while and it is in the middle of, you know, whatever. But they do these one shots every so often and I start picking these up. These are slightly bigger books, Godzilla Rivals. I haven't read this one yet, I just picked it up yesterday. But I did read this one, The Best of Mechagodzilla, and that's several short stories featuring Mechagodzilla in this, like, double or triple sized book. And uh, some of the artwork is pretty interesting um, from different, off, you know, different artists and stuff like that. Uh, you can see, I don't mean to be rambling here, but I'm particularly interested in the art and the stories are very cool. And then I have this Godzilla Rivals as well, and I have read this one. Um, shorter stories, little bits and pieces of ongoing stories kind of confusing to read sometimes but because it's a one shot it's more targeted at an external audience that hasn't been reading the main series so my favorite thing that I have been reading since I started collecting and there's only two issues of this particular run and that is the hack slash series this is the what do we got this is the first book that I picked up and read uh, this is kind of like, you know, for you video game nerds out there, this is basically Lollipop Chainsaw, uh, if you will. Um, a, you know, young schoolgirl turned zombie hunter series, but the, uh, the writing is quite good in this. This is issue one, loved it. Issue two, loved it. You can see the, uh, you know, Lollipop Chainsaw similarities here for sure in the cover. Um, but I really enjoy this. This has only had two issues. Th this character, Zoe Thorogood, uh, she's been in a bunch of different, you know, iterations of the Hack Slash over the years. This is a new run, um, but uh, I'm really enjoying that so far. And then uh, something I picked up on a whim here was the Gargoyles Halloween Special. 
And I love the art in this. It's very true to the TV show. If I can just flip open to a page and show you. Uh, very true to the TV show. I really appreciate the art style. Uh, unfortunately, this has been running for a little while and I would really like to catch up on this, but I'm waiting for them to release some kind of trade paperback or hardcover, uh, you know, whatever collection of these books so that I can catch up on the Gargoyles run. Uh, something I picked up on a whim just because was Howard the Duck, uh, which is number one of course, you know, what they do with the comics, it's not really number one, it's number one, number 30 or something of all the times that they've restarted. But I kind of liked the uh, 50th anniversary sort of presentation of this. I sort of like the Disney-esque art inside. Uh, they're kind of going for that, you know, sort of cartoon funny pages look. Um, I don't know if I'm going to continue buying this. I just thought it was kind of neat to have the number one. And then uh, something I haven't read yet, which I do intend to, but I'm a little bit uh, nervous about this, and that is uh, Star Trek uh, Picard's Academy. I have issue one, two, and three because they were all available at the comic book store. Uh, I'm going to read these in the coming days and check if this is something I want to carry on with or not. Um, the new, you know, Star Trek stuff can be kind of iffy, so, I, you know, I don't have my hopes up. But uh, one last comic book here that I am pretty excited about, which I got for Christmas from my mother, and I was absolutely astounded that she even knew that this would be something I would like. <laughs> Excuse me, but this is DuckTales number 11 from 19, like 90. Uh, I think this came out, 1990, 1991, something like that. I used to collect this particular run of DuckTales comic books, uh, you know, back in 1990, I was an avid collector of Disney comic books. And this is one issue I don't remember owning so I'm pretty happy to have this. I don't have a whole lot of my childhood comics. I have a small short box over here with maybe 20 or 30 Disney comics that were mine as a child and most of the rest of them uh, you know, just disappeared over time as your childhood possessions often do. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. You know, if this is something that you like, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below because you know, the channel is so focused on video games most of the time, but for those of you who know me, you know that I want to talk about other stuff. I want to talk about comic books and movies and going to conventions and all of that sort of stuff. So definitely, if this is your kind of content, support this content by hitting the like button, maybe sharing this video with other comic book friends. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay classy.